Good morning. Uh, good to see you all today. Um, hopefully it's not too cool in here. <laughs> we could always turn it up. <laughs> but uh, um, we got two, all kinds of things here. So, of, of course, as many of you know, if, if you don't know already, uh, Dorothy Wesky's funeral is tomorrow at 11 a.m. Um, and in place of a Bible study, we'll begin with uh, a midweek services, um, starting this Wednesday with the Thanksgiving Eve service at uh, 7 p.m. And, uh, and then the Advent services will, will then follow. Uh, this Advent series will we'll, uh, talk about uh, waiting for the Lord um, through the words of the Psalms. So we'll, we'll take a look at a few Psalms. Well, then today, um, uh, if you haven't looked at uh, the commitment and, um, and uh, offering form, uh, or not really offering, but um, uh, I, I didn't bring a copy of the other form with me. I don't know what I titled it. Yeah, that's a, a commit, another commitment form. This one's more service. The other one's more your relationship with God. Uh, the one with your relationship with the Lord, I'll let you keep that one. And, but this one um, is, again, just a reminder of all the activities that are, are going on in the church. And so um, also just want to say uh, thank you to all who have served and helped out, how we have the, the trustees who who have to take care of the building and the, the elders who uh, make sure if, if there's um, any spiritual need that I'm not aware of, that they, that they bring it to me and, or, or that they themselves also work with the people. And also, thank you for everyone with the, who helped out with the altar care and, and uh, Sunday morning, uh, the coffee hour, making sure that's all put together. Um, um, and also, someone's got to be the secretary and, and the president of the congregation. And, and, uh, um, uh, and of course, Barbara helps uh, with the organ when, when we need an organist. And um, I just, everyone has, I'm just thankful that everyone has pitched in to keep the church on going. And I know a lot of times with any of those positions, you get often contacted when something goes wrong. <laughs> so... Um, here's a time to say thank you um, in, this, in this season of thanks of November um, for all that you do and, and to keep the church going. And sometimes we even mix up the positions. Sometimes we're, we're fulfilling different roles as, as wherever the need lies and, and whoever's available at the time. Uh, so uh, again, I thank you for that and I look forward to, uh, I know many of you will continue in positions for, for the upcoming year. Uh, Is that all I have for today? That's all I've got. All right, today uh, we're, we have white to celebrate um, Christ as king as we are at the end of the, the church calendar. And, and as oh, he is our king, we get to serve him uh, in, in all that we do. Um, and we get to praise him in all that he does. So let's go ahead and, and has created. So let us go ahead and stand and, and join with the choir in singing Earth and All Stars. Yeah, hymn number 817. Yeah, the first three verses, and then we'll finish with the sixth verse.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause to privately confess specific shortcomings to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by sin, sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you and Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. Rejoice, for your sins are completely forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things to your beloved Son, whom you anointed priest forever and King of all creation, grant that all people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united under the glorious and gentle rule of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may now be seated for the first reading.
Our first reading <clears throat> comes from Daniel chapter 7, selected verses. As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow, the hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were opened. In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All peoples, nations, and men of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Revelation chapter 1, beginning at verse 4b. Grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the peoples of the earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? asked Jesus, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Peter replied. It was your people and your chief priest who handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would go fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you are right in saying, I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify the truth. Everyone on the side of the truth listens to me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now sing the hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns.
and grace to you and peace from God our Father. Or as St. John puts it, a grace to you and peace from him who is, who was, and who is to come. That's St. John's greeting from the book of Revelation. And it's just the beginning of his greeting. He's giving the message the triune God gave to him. Who is this God we worship? He is the one who is. He has always existed and always will. He was, existed before time and before this world began. And he is to come. He will continue when time is no more, and he will also come when it is time for the final judgment. And John continues with his greeting. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. The number seven is often used to represent something that is complete or perfect. Here, you might even understand this as we worship the God who is lacking in nothing. The Holy Spirit is complete a person of the triune God and Jesus Christ, a person of God, a faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, the ruler of the kings on earth, a son to the person of the Father. And Jesus is the faithful one who lived a God-pleasing human life. He came to bear witness to the truth. He came to this world to reveal who he is and that he is one worthy to be worshipped. The one who brought faith to the people and brought salvation to the people. Jesus is the firstborn of the dead He is the first to rise from the dead from his own power. And by this same power, he will also rise us from the dead. He is the ruler of the kings on earth. His power is stronger than any ruling king on earth. And his lordship rules over all of them. As you heard in our gospel lesson, uh, Jesus' kingdom is not of this world. It is not bound by the power of human hands. Jesus is Lord over all creation. Even the mightiest rulers from the past, present, or future will never be above Jesus. All people will have to answer to him when judgment day comes. There's no escaping our triune God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He brings justice and order. He carries out, he brings life and gives life and carries out punishment. No sin from any person can escape his sight. But yet, while he is all-powerful, he loves us. He has made a way for us to spend eternity with him and has made a way to bring freedom to all people. Sin holds us back from spending eternity with God not doing what he asks us to do, and missing the mark. 
Our sin brings death upon ourselves. Many have tried to listen to God's voice and be that perfect follower of God, but no one has or can succeed. No matter how rich or poor, weak or strong, alone or with a team, no one can match what God can do. Yet again, while God is all-powerful and we are not, he loves us. He has given us his son, Jesus. Jesus, who has left heaven and all its glory and majesty, has come to this earth to be with his people. He who has humbled himself to live as the perfect man among sinners. To care for them. To teach them. To guide them to the right way. The way of life. To bring healing. Faith. And salvation. Salvation by offering up his own life as the sacrifice of all sacrifices, that his own blood would cover the sins of all people once and for all, that the payment of sin of the people would be paid by his very own perfect blood. Because our sins are paid for through Jesus Christ, we won't die eternally. Just as Jesus didn't die eternally. Jesus rose from the grave, defeating death. He was truly human as he ate and drank with the disciples in his resurrected body. Then he ascended into heaven, sitting at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Today, all three persons, one triune God, is on the throne in heaven, as he is Lord over all. As I step back and ponder this message that is given from St. John, who has heard from God, I speculate on how this message is refreshing. While we may have heard about God's saving message time and time again, we still may leave marveling and pondering how does all this work? I'll know about you, but I've never seen anyone rise from the dead before. And we may also ask, how does this triune God be at all places at once and yet sit on his throne in heaven? And who is this ruler? I've never seen a perfect ruler in my entire life. I've always had to talk to people and learn from people from any position with a healthy dose of skepticism. And who is this king that is perfect and abundantly loves us creatures who have nothing to offer for him? Nothing that he needs. But that is why, just simply, all the glory belongs to God. He is truly good while everything else in this world is corrupt. And out of his love for us, he has saved us, you and me, by sending us his own son, Jesus Christ, 
to die for our sin. As we believe and have faith that Jesus is our Savior, we don't have to fear judgment day. When Jesus comes again a second time with the clouds, all the people will see separation. Separation of those who are going to heaven from those who are going to hell. Those who have rejected Jesus Christ in their hearts will be wailing and crying out in fear because they will have to suffer the consequences of rejecting him. But we believing Christians won't have to fear. We won't have to fear Jesus' return to this earth. The destination of eternity in hell isn't a serious concern for us because though we have sinned and missed the mark, though we haven't always listened to God's voice by following his commands, we are redeemed by Jesus as we believe he is our Savior. We are saved by his works and not our own. His perfect blood is enough to turn away God's wrath upon us. We, by simply believing that Jesus is our Savior, we know that there is a place in heaven for each and every one of us. God's eternal kingdom. A place that is away from God's enemies. Jesus will come not to condemn us or harm us. He will come to rescue us and bring us to his eternal home. And in God's kingdom, we get to be priests to God as we continue to bring praises to him. We are surrounded by his majesty and love, and we won't be able to help but give him all the glory and honor for eternity. So as we are today, no longer bound by death because of our sin, how do you plan to use your freedom found in Christ Jesus? How do you plan to live your life? Across the world, some might keep God's love in their hearts and keep it to themselves. For the gospel is for them. Some might not be able to contain it that they are willing to go to the ends of the earth to go share this good news about Jesus Christ. However, I'd imagine most would let God's love not only dwell in their hearts, but also allow the Holy Spirit to guide them, to guide them to do good works, not only for their own benefit, but also the benefit of those around them. That they too might experience God's love. That they too might know and believe that Jesus is the Christ the one who has saved us from our sin. With the guidance of the Holy Spirit, let us strive to live and act like good citizens in God's kingdom. Though we still wrestle with sin, let us strive to be an example for others to follow to be an inspiration for others, that they too can do things they never thought they would see themselves doing because they are receiving help from the Holy Spirit. Let us encourage others to seek better things and to show that there are greater things to live for and serve 
jobs and whatever this, the tempor this temporary world has to offer. Let us use our freedom in Christ Jesus to not only bring God's hope and love into our own life, but also the lives of those around us. For serving Jesus brings love and joy, while serving sin brings brokenness and death. And while judgment from God cannot be escaped by anyone, nor his loving promise of salvation is too far out of reach. Today we are saved by Jesus Christ, the King of all kings. He is the Lord of all creation, who is good. He is the beginning of all things and the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Let us leave today knowing that we are eternally saved through Jesus Christ. And in his name alone, amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Uh, let us now quickly stand for the, the Apostles' Creed that has somehow disappeared from my notes. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You now may be seated as we collect the offering.
As we wait patiently for the Lord's return, let us pray to our gracious God on behalf of the whole church and for all people according to their needs. Most merciful God and Father, give your holy church throughout the world your grace to serve you with reverence and awe, granting us faith to endure to the end. Lord, in your mercy. Open the mouths of pastors in our circuit, district, and synod and give them the words to testify your love in Christ Jesus and the hope that is in them. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you know all our anxieties and fears. Grant those troubled in mind and spirit and strengthen and give them the strength to cast every care upon you. According to your will, give them the quietness of heart and a firm trust and mercy you have shown to us in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, place the lonely in the family of your holy church, that they may find peace in Christ and fulfillment in loving service to their neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Make the leaders of our nation to walk in the way of justice and truth, that they may use the power vested in them to protect the weak and innocent. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the face of natural disasters, wars, famines, and troubles of all kinds, fill our hearts with repentance and humility, that in every circumstance we may trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, Look upon with favor all who are in need. Fill the hungry with good things. Give poor and the unemployed gainful employment. We pray that you would continue to keep us in good health. But for those who are sick, we pray that you give them what, make them well. Especially those we have now named silently in our hearts. Give them all strength and comfort through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Defend all orphans and widows and protect the weak, the unborn, and the aged. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusted in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may you leave with this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. We now sing... The song Majesty, as it is written in your bulletin. Majesty, worship his majesty. 